Hello, and welcome to Video Games. I'm your hostess for the Majima Chapters, Blue Form Holiday, and to my right is my co-host, Red Buffler Man. Well, actually, from your point of view, he's to my left, but forget it. He's actually physically to my right by about 90 miles due to how I'm oriented in my room. I played a lot of first-person shooters when I was young, so I'm intensely aware of people's positions relative to my own. In fact, I am quite uncomfortable if I'm able, unable to orient myself in an environment. When I stayed at the Renaissance Center in Detroit, I caught a piece of Detroit skyline in the worst hotel I've ever stayed at. And buddy, I've been to a lot of hotels. The room itself was definitely not the worst I've experienced. But the excessively bland decor transient in your memory and ready to eject itself the moment you have something of actual value to replace it with, combined with a total lack of amenities, a busted ice machine, an alarmingly musty smell, all made the experience quite suffocating. The most overtly remarkable thing about it was the tissue-thin walls. We had our lively and jocular night of Mahjong dip into the AM hours, but there was a knock on our hotel door. The cops came after a noise complaint. Our light hired a night of relatively tame fun, destroyed due to this establishment's total lack of soundproofing. Not only that, we were victims too. If a mouse sneezed eight rooms over, we would hear it. In my opinion, many televisions were playing just a bit too loud. But I didn't issue a noise complaint because I'm not a narc. After Ezra exiting the smothering auditory torture chamber that was our hotel room, we get into the heart of the problem with the Renaissance Center. The main spire carrying the elevators punctuates the agoraphobic open-air cylindrical atrium, and the symmetry immediately assaults your sense of orientation. Its complex labyrinthine footpaths and endless construction are two formidable obstacles. Depending on which floor you are on, the stairs are placed on different cardinal directions in singletons or opposing pairs, depending on the floor. With varying ballrooms, businesses, and services lining the outer walls of each floor. Remembering which floor you're on and the location of the stairways was daunting enough, but you cannot ascend from the second to third floor using the circular walkway surrounding the main spire at each floor at all. We had an added curve ball that the stair construction disabled us from getting to the second and third floor without going to registration, which had an elevator from the first to third floor. This elevator broke down, by the way, and I got to sit 10 minutes in a busted elevator with total strangers. Very awkward. I wouldn't recommend it. And as an added bonus, when we tried to find the food court, they were hidden behind drywall behind the escalators down on floor zero. How do you have food hidden at a hotel? It's like the first thing people are thinking of before or after a long day. Instead, you just see the red, white, and blue-blooded American vehicles on display on the ground floor, with tables suggesting there might be food-based consumption happening. Late on the second day of our stay, we entered the front entrance and were funneled up the escalators to the second floor. The building's architecture stub stubbornly directs your whole focus towards the escalators, if you look left or right, you're going to be looking at a sloped angle telling you, go here. If you've been keeping up, if you go to the second floor, you can't really get anywhere. So when this happened, my joyfriend tapped me on the shoulder and said, I thought you said you were good at keeping your sense of direction. That's when this building crossed the line. Now I'm good at being accommodating. All these petty complaints about the hotel room or disorienting feelings weren't going to throw off my trip. But now, my ego was at stake. This building designer had issued a direct challenge to me. This isn't a game anymore. Art and design are two separate ideals. From an art standpoint, the main lobby of the Renaissance Center is beautiful and a testament to the peak of what the Motor City can accomplish. For a game designer, a few forced trans traversals and thoughtfully placed checkpoints would guarantee that the player walked through every possible permutation of path through this environment, meaningfully engaging with it and collecting some trinkets on the way. For a connoisseur of MMOs, 
This is nowhere near the worst floor plan I've had to deal with in that setting. Honestly, it's kind of interesting thinking about jumping across floor paths in the open atrium like a platforming exercise. However, this is not a game. As a hotel designer, you've created an absolute hellhole for drunken convention attendees to navigate. The main message being sent by your design is, get lost. For a space that's supposed to be welcoming guests in unfamiliar territory, merely adding to their confusion, anxiety, disorientation, longing, homesickness, rage, and maybe they just really want to get to the bathroom. On the other hand, Yakuza Zero places you in a mundane red light district with a few alleyways and landmarkable architecture at every city block. The city's filled with an assault of shops, vendors, and bars, all vying for your attention, competing in this cramped, crowded environment. For such a small city block, you definitely feel lost. However, through immaculate game design, thoughtful maps, color-coded businesses, and punchy navigation directions, such as my personal favorite, Get Milk. Navigating to the proper street door or stairwell becomes effortless. It becomes a game. Not only that, this holy land that becomes the Yakuza playground remains relatively unchained for, unchanged for about 17 games. What begins an exposure to a new and foreign land rapidly becomes familiar and comforting. We become masters of this city, begging us to lose our attention and lose track of where we're going. In fact, it facilitates the game design. And now we get to the bottom line. Kamurocho, despite being a tiny, unremarkable open world map that pales to even make a fraction of the size of a map like Todd Howard's groundbreaking seminal work, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, it invites you to get lost. This is fitting for the red light district it encompasses, where many people are trying to make a living, hoping that you get lost in their particular shop, bar, batting cage, telephone club, disco, yakuza office, mahjong parlor, shogi stand, pocket race circuit, arcade, Don Quixote, pawn shop, video store, really anything goes here. Therefore, I want you to get lost, not away from our stream but for you to get lost in our particular journey through Kamurocho. And that's the bottom line. Now sit back and enjoy our stream, a co-equal physical audio, -vi virtual physical audio visual experience tailored specifically for you. I think we did it. I'm done. I think we did it. I've had this sitting in my phone for like. <laughs> I wrote this from Red Muffler Man and wrote it in like an hour in February. <laughs> Nick, you got to get rid of the flag. No. <laughs> okay, Nick, you got to get rid of our flag. Thank you. We did it. <laughs> I've never been so simultaneously confused and interested in something in my Great. entire life. I have Great. no I idea have what's just captured. <laughs> I have completely captured the essence of Tim Rogers. Start with something that sounds like you're something you're signed up for, completely derail into a completely random tangent, and then somehow land back where you're supposed to be. Oh my god, it's fucking beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> That's mostly for Nick. Oh, it was 100% for Holly and I almost. But then there was also Deuce. And I know Rod would appreciate that at the very least. Also, thank you for the sub, Joey. If anyone's ever confused, please just uh, watch Tim Rogers and you'll be less confused. <laughs>